Hey everybody, Ryan Gromfin here, author, speaker, chef, restaurateur, and the founder of therestaurantboss.com as well as restaurantcoachingclub.com. Today we're gonna to talk about something very, very important to your restaurant, food cost, and something I get a lot of questions about, which is why do we need to know the food cost in our restaurant and how do we determine it? So we're gonna show you not only why you need to know food costs, but we're gonna also go over all of the food cost formulas and calculations that you need to know in your restaurant for the rest of your life. Basically, food cost determines your profitability. Without knowing how much the items on your menu cost and what your food cost is at the end of your different periods, it's gonna be very, very difficult for you to track and run a highly profitable restaurant and know where you need to make adjustments and changes. It kind of creates the baseline for us. Also, I mean, ultimately, really, a lower food cost means higher profit. So it's something you should definitely be tracking on a very consistent basis. It allows you to properly price out your menu items. You know, I always say no one would go into a tire store and buy, or I'm sorry, no one would sell you tires from a tire store unless they knew exactly how much every tire on their shelves costs. When you go into a tire store and try to negotiate with the uh, salesperson there, what's the first thing they do? They go back to their computer, they look up a few things. What they're looking up is exactly what they paid for those tires. And I can't believe how many restaurant operators and chefs and general managers and owners don't know exactly in real time how much every menu item on their menu costs them to prepare. That information allows us to optimize your menu. You might have heard the term menu engineering. It's amazing the amount of profits that we could increase in a restaurant by doing nothing but moving things around on a menu and maybe putting a box or bold type or having a server verbalize a certain item on a menu. But we don't want to start doing that. Actually, we can't start doing that until we know exactly how much every item on your menu costs. And then also, Food cost is not how much you spend on food. That's another myth or a misconception that I get a lot is, well, isn't food cost just how much I spent on food this month? And no, that is not correct. You will get very false and very varying numbers if that's how you're determining your food cost. So let's get right into this. There's really two types of food costs in your restaurant or bar. The first is plate cost, which is extraordinarily simple to understand and everyone without any excuses should know how much every plate, every drink, every glass of wine, every item in their restaurant costs. And I'm gonna show you why, because it's so simple. And then period costs, which is a little more complicated, but you still need to know this in your restaurant. So when we're talking about plate cost, very, very simply, how much did it cost to prepare? How much do you sell it for? Gives you food costs. So again, how much did it cost to prepare? divided by how much do you sell it for gives you the food cost. Let's look at an example here. Let's say that a hamburger costs you $2 to prepare and you sell it for $8. So two divided by $8 gives you 0.25. Well, very simply, all we have to do is do 0.25 times 100, which gives us 25%, which in this case would give us a food cost, or you might wanna call it a plate cost for that particular hamburger. Now, figuring out how much the hamburger costs, because there's so many different components in there, that's a little more complicated. And we're gonna talk about that in a different video, but for the purpose of this video, all you need to know is that the cost to prepare divided by the sales price times 100 gives you the food cost or the plate cost. But if you wanna determine your period food cost, you need to understand something called the cost of goods sold formula. That's the COGS, cost of goods sold. So here's the calculation for your cost of goods sold formula. Beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory gives you usage. That's how much food you used or beer or wine or whatever you're figuring out, but that's how much you used in that period. And then like before, now we take the usage divided by sales, which gives us a cost of goods sold. And then we take that and multiply it by hundred, which gives us our percentage. So cost of goods sold formula can be used to determine the period cost for any category in your restaurant. Like I said, you could use this for, well, here's some examples right here. You can use it to determine your food cost, your beer costs. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Your wine cost, your liquor cost, as well as your merchandise cost. Now, if you notice, I separated out beer bottled and draft, as well as wine bottled and by the glass. That's how I prefer to track. I like to track as very specific data as possible, broken down into as small categories as possible. So then we can really determine if there's a problem, what's going on, 
or where we need to adjust prices or where we're having success or where we need to work a little bit. So these are the categories I recommend that you should be keeping track of in your restaurant. And this is how I recommend that we break them down. Now here's two things you really need to make sure of when we're using the cost of goods sold formula. Make sure you're comparing the correct category purchases and inventory to the correct category sales. So if we're trying to figure out beer cost, we need to make sure that we're using beer purchases, beer inventory, and then beer sales, not total sales. And then also, you need to make sure that you're comparing the correct inventory and purchases period to the correct sales period. Meaning if we're, well here, let's look at this example. If we wanted to get a period food cost for March, here's exactly what we need to know. So again, we're talking about March here. So we need to know the March beginning inventory, and then we're gonna add that to March purchases, and then we're gonna subtract that from the March ending inventory, which will give us March's food usage. Now, people ask me a lot of times, how do we determine beginning inventory? Well, that's very simple. Beginning inventory is the ending inventory of the period before. So for March's beginning inventory, that's just February's ending inventory. So let's look at an example here. If beginning inventory was $5,000 in March and we purchased $24,000 in food, and then we took an ending inventory and we had $4,000 on our shelves, that means we used $25,000 in food. So now going back to that cost of goods sold calculation, we take our $25,000, which was usage, divided by March's food sales, not total sales, but March's food sales, because remember, food usage divided by food sales gives us 0 0.25. 0 0.25 times 100 gives us our 25% food cost. You can see I've got the formula down here at the bottom again for you. Let's just do a quick review. I just wanna put this up on the screen for you. You can pause the video if you wanna write this down again, but we're gonna move on here. And I wanna go over the number one question I get asked all the time, almost every day, is what should my food cost be? Well, that's very difficult to answer, and to be completely frank with you, anyone that tells you that your food cost should be between this and this, or this is an industry average, or anything like that, um, frankly, doesn't have enough information and doesn't really know what they're talking about because nobody can tell you that you should have this food cost based on your type of restaurant. There's too many other factors that we need to know and if you're interested in learning more about what those other factors are, and then ultimately a formula on how to determine what your food cost should be based on this other information, please visit my website. That's therestaurantboss.com. When you get to the homepage, there's this huge green button that says get it now. When you click on that, you're gonna be able to download completely for free what I call the foundation for a lifetime of restaurant success. And we're gonna go over step by step exactly how to determine the most important number in your restaurant, the number that every restaurant owner should know, the number that will determine your ultimate profitability, and it's a little bit more than just food cost, and it's something that you absolutely need to know. So head on over to therestaurantboss.com, click get it now. Please post some questions or comments below this video, wherever you're watching it, whether you're watching it on my blog or on YouTube or on someone else's blog, I'd love to hear from you. I respond to every single one of those questions and comments. As well, if you're not watching this on YouTube or even if you are watching this on YouTube, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and click on the big gray button right now to get updated weekly with a new video, a new free training video that I post onto YouTube every week. Again, this has been Ryan Gronfen saying have an absolutely wonderful day.